It's your sewing short for Shauna, and I'm doing a little bit of recording today. Um, and I have had so many requests over the years for me to tell you what kind of sewing machine you should buy. You know, it could be for people who've sewn for a long time and are like ready to switch to a new sewing machine or somebody who's never sewn before and wants to buy their first sewing machine or someone who has a sewing machine that's broken or is just they know it's not working right and they want something different. So I'm going to do a quick tutorial on sewing machines and tell you what my recommendations are. So first of all, the types of machines, you've got four basic types of machines. You've got a vintage mechanical. So this is a vintage mechanical. And with a vintage mechanical, all the parts kind of open up and you can get into it. Or, um, oh, this one's got a little with chubby turret holding it together for cleaning and oiling it. There's an instruction manual that come with it and it'll tell you what parts that you put oil into and how often you do it and how you clean it and everything comes apart. You can get back here and change out your light bulb. And you'll notice in here, there's a bunch of little records stacked on top of each other. And these different records are each one of these stitches. So you've got an arm that mechanically goes along each one of these stitches until you find the one that you're selecting. And then there's a bunch of different parts attached to that that make the needle go back and forth and create these stitches for you. So that's your vintage mechanical sewing machine. And I call it mechanical. Um, all sewing machines that plug in are electronic. This is an electronic mechanical, it plugs in. Um, it's not computerized. So a modern mechanical, uh, has the same sort of shape. You, um, but the difference here is that I have no access. I can't get into this. Um, and if I look at the owner's manual, it's gonna tell me to not get into it. I need to take it in for servicing. Uh, and a lot of times people say, take it in for servicing once a year. So this machine cost me um, about $200 and taking it in to get service costs about 150. This will resell for about 125. So in my mind, I'm just kind of like, well, is it worth it? And honestly, I don't think it is. Um, I have opened up a few of these and just FYI, if you open it up, you void the warranty. So if you've got a warranty on your machine, um, you want to make sure you don't open that up. Okay. This mechanical sewing machine also has those little records inside of it. And um, it, uh, those little records are plastic instead of metal. All right. And it, this machine is much lighter than this one. All right, so now we have a modern computerized sewing machine. And modern computerized sewing machines can range from very inexpensive like this one $200 but this machine doesn't have those little record player things in here this has got a computer in it and it has a screen that I'm reading so what happens with this is that when I select one of these stitches and it's got 35 stitches probably more than that it just gives a different instruction set to the computer that controls has a mechanical arm that controls the needle but so it's a very different thing. That's why this can be very, this is way lighter than this one, even though it has more stitches. Um, a lightweight sewing machine is not a good thing. I mean, yeah, if you're traveling with it, you like to be able to um, carry it easily, but a lightweight sewing machine as you're sewing is gonna kind of drift around if you're doing anything kind of heavy, more likely to, you know what I mean? So a nice heavy sewing machine is a good deal. So there's three. Now what's the fourth type of sewing machine? It's an industrial sewing machine and I'm not porting my industrial sewing machine in here, but an industrial sewing machine, um, they usually only have one stitch that they do. It's either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch or a blind hem or, you know what I mean? Like they do one thing and uh, they are definitely, uh, like this vintage mechanical, you are in charge of keeping it clean and oiling it and all that stuff. You, I mean, you can hire someone to come over and do it for you. It's quite expensive. But um, anyways, those are your, your
your basic types of machines. So uh, now when you look at the machines, there's some things that are different. You've got the top loading bobbin, which is where you take the case cover off and then you take the bobbin out of the machine. So the bobbin drops in and out of the machine. It's very simple. Then you have the front loading bobbins and the front loading bobbins have got a case and you put the bobbin into the case and then you put the bobbin with the case back into the machine and it's a little bit more complicated. You can also have what we call side loading bobbins where it's the same sort of thing but instead the bobbins on this side and that's where most industrial machines have their bobbins and when you have a side loading one your needle's actually going to be facing that direction you'll be threading from that side so um, those are the two types or three types of bobbins uh, situations you'll find on a sewing machine this one, the top loading is definitely a lot easier. And I think that's why you find a lot of the modern sewing machines have the top loading bobbin is because it's just so much easier to learn on. But I will tell you, once you have figured out how to do the front loading, it's just as easy. So it's just that little learning curve right before, you know, you start sewing for the rest of your life. So, you know, if you want to spend 45 minutes and learn how to do that front loading bobbin, I personally like front loading bottom, bobbins better uh, for the long haul, um, although you're going to have trouble finding one with front loaders. Like I said, most modern machines nowadays just have the top loading and that's, you know, they're fine. They just are long term are a little bit more complicated. All right. So then the next thing is you have on sewing machines, you have vertical spool pins or you have horizontal spool pins. So this vintage machine has two vertical spool pins in the back. This one has a vertical spool pin, then it's got a hole here where I can pop a second vertical spool in. This one has a horizontal. Oh, so heavy, I love it. Um, this one has a horizontal spool holder. And um, if you have a horizontal spool holder, you have to have the cap to hold that spool on there and the caps come in multiple sizes. And um, while feeding the thread, so if you put this thread on here and you're sewing, this is spinning and it's wobbling back and forth and the thread can fall off and choke off around here. So it's not as great of a system as the horizontal spool because this one, you know, the thread the spool is not moving. The thread's just feeding off around that cap. There's no wobbling. So this is superior for sewing, but I cannot stand keeping track of these little caps. And if you don't have the cap, you can't sew. There's no jerry-rigging it. You have to have the cap in three sizes and you have to match your cap to your size of spool. And that to me is really annoying. So I tend to um, prefer the vertical ones, but like I said, that's actually superior. Um, and then there's one other one. You can get like a stand that will go behind your sewing machine and you put your spool of thread on it and it'll feed it off the top and then you can thread around it like if you're using comb thread or something. And that's how you do it with the industrial machines. They have a stand that the thread feeds off of. Um, so there are some sewing machines. Oh, I didn't bring one back here. Hold on one second. And then there's this kind of sewing machine here, which is a toy. I'm just kidding. It's a real sewing machine, but it might as well be a toy. Um, this sewing machine, if you'll see, it has got three straight stitches. It's got a short one, a medium one, and a long one. And then it's got one zigzag. Oh, it's got a narrow zigzag, a medium zigzag, and a wide zigzag. And you get to them through the stitch selector situation here. Um, this is a bad choice for a machine. A machine that only has like three straight stitches and three zigzag stitches and a really short bed. And uh, just, anyways. It's great. It's a great starter for a kid. You know what I mean? Cause it's super simple and it's little and kids like little simple things. So, I mean, that's great. Um, but I think a kid can handle this as well. So on here you have got what we have call 
infinite stitch length. So I can go all the way, I can dial the exact length that I want on here from zero all the way up to four. No, those numbers don't mean anything, but that's something else. And I have infinite stitch width, which I can go from a straight stitch all the way up to my widest zigzag on this dial. So there's like, a hundreds of combinations of length and width that I can do. This is a very important on a sewing machine. These two things, infinite stitch width and stitch length. On a computerized sewing machine, you have that same option here too, infinite stitch width and length, just by pushing one of these buttons going up and down. So that's super important. Feed dogs, in the sewing machine, we've got these wonderful things called feed dogs and they're underneath the foot here. And they look, they feel like little teeth. They kind of snag on your hand. Anyways, they work like dogs to feed your fabric through. They work in this kind of elliptical motion. They grab onto your fabric, they pull it back, they grab it on, they pull it back. So feed dogs. They're, um, uh, modern machines have usually got like four or five wide and they're fairly aggressive. So just imagine you want to sew a button on. If you want to sew a button on, you want to go back and forth from one hole to the other and you don't want that machine to move, right? I mean, you don't want it to feed your fabric through because then your needle will hit the button and you'll break your, your um, needle. So on this machine, we have this little switch here called the feed dog drop. And then when I switch, switch it over, all of a sudden my feed dogs drop below the, the throat plate and now they're, they're still moving, but they're moving underneath the throat plate and they never come up, they don't grab onto your fabric and pull it. So that feed dog drop is a function on a lot of sewing machines, but some sewing machines don't have the feed dog drop. What they have is this little plastic square that snaps on over top of the throw plate. For me, I will never buy a sewing machine that um, has that little piece of plastic that snaps on the throw plate cover. It's a game changer for me. It's like, I want to be able to drop my feed dogs. I don't want to have to keep track of that little plastic thing. So it doesn't, it's not like it's universal. You can take one off of this machine and then put it on that machine. It has to be specifically for your machine. And if you lose it, good luck finding a replacement. So feed dog drops, super important. All right, now, um, so I've kind of gone over some of the, the functions of a machine that you can find. Um, and I will tell you now, I do not endorse any brand of sewing machine. I've worked on really great singers and really crappy singers, really great Jukies and really crappy Zukies, really great Janomis and really bad Janomis. I mean, all of my, I mean, I've never worked on a bad Husqvarna Viking, but Husqvarna Viking machines have got all these proprietary feet, all these proprietary, like everything about proprietary bobbins. So you have to like really pay a lot of money anytime you want a new foot or you want to get some bobbins. They're not interchangeable with the other machines. So it's kind of like, mm. but they're good machines. Um, and uh, Berninas, they used to be solid. But a lot of the newer Berninas, low-end ones, I'm just like, man, why would I pay all that much mo money for something that's, you know, I could get the exact same thing for 200 bucks from a different brand because they're writing on the name, like they're writing on their name. So uh, what's, what's some other ones? Faf, Fafs are awesome. I love the vintage Fafs, but um, I don't endorse any particular brand here of machine. I might one day, you know, if somebody talked me into it, but, um, so what, I, what I'm gonna tell you, here's the great big ending of this, what sewing machine do you buy? The things that are non-negotiable in a sewing machine. Stitch length dial, be it digital or manual. Stitch width dial, be it digital or manual. I have to have those. It can't be just a selection of a short stitch, medium stitch, long stitch, small zigzag, medium stitch. No, no, you can't sew with that. You can't sew that way. Um, feed dog drop. I want that feed dog drop. I want to be able to have that in my machine. So even any of my basic sewing machine, my bottom of the line, $200, this is 200, this is 200. Cheap little machines, they're fun machines, they're great to sew on. They have those functions, I'm happy. Um, vertical spool pin, horizontal spool pin, yeah. Front loading bobbin, top loading bobbin, yeah. I mean, of course I prefer the front loading, but then I've been sewing all my life and uh, I love teaching on the top loading ones, that's all I'm saying. And um, 
Uh, so those ones are, are negotiable. Now, if you're looking, if you're wanting, you know, if you're able to spend a little bit more money, you know, you're committing to sewing, you're going to want to have a sewing machine for a long time. Um, I would say a forever machine would be in like the 300 to $700 range like that is a really great basic forever machine. And you can buy um, industrial machines in that range as well. Well, you can buy one for like $700 around there. Um, it only goes straight, but um, a forever machine. So a forever machine is gonna have a few more functions. Oh my gosh, this jokey is so heavy, I love it. This Juki is a cover machine and it costs about $700 online right now. I think when they came out, they're more expensive, but what does it have that makes it a forever machine? It has, uh, it has a button here. Okay. So it has a speed selector. I can go slow or fast. I'm going to say a forever machine right now is leaning towards computerized. I love computerized um, machines because they have a ton of buttonhole selections, right? Um, they have automatic, like one touch and uh, it sews your buttonhole in all sorts of fun shapes. They have, you know, a lot of easy access, different stitches. Um, one drawback of computerized sewing machines, if you're sewing with really heavy material, they sometimes, what I call bottom out, they'll like your needle will try and go through and it'll go and, um, and then you'll have to reboot your sewing machine, turn it off and turn it on. Um, it refuses to go through a lot of heavy, uh, heavy layers, but I've noticed a lot of the, the newer computerized machines have what we call higher penetration power. I'm not even making that up. Look it up. Um, and, uh, they can go, uh, they're surprising how much, how many layers they'll go through. I mean, it really blows my mind. I, my assistant Catherine was sewing through like some crazy layers. I was like, I don't even know if my industrial machine can handle that. So I wouldn't use that as an excuse. Um, this is a little bit of an older Juki, but um, uh, let's see. So if it sells in, in the instructions or in the selling vernacular, it says high penetration power, that means it's gonna handle heavy fabrics pretty well. So it's got a speed controller on here so I can turn it down really slow so I don't accidentally go too fast if I'm doing something super intricate. Uh, it has a thread cut button so you don't have to like stop and like cut your thread and whatever, you just push that button and it'll cut it for you. This actually has a foot control that if I push on the heel part, it will cut the thread and bring the needle up for me. So I don't even have to let go if I'm holding on under here. I, I can just like hit it with my foot, my heel, which is really nice as long as you know it's there. Um, this has uh, hands free, I mean feet, you can't do hands free sewing, foot free sewing. So you can unplug the presser foot and just push stop and go with this button here. Um, and it has a needle up and needle down button. So it'll bring the needle up and, and needle down. It also has a full alphabet that you can embroider, right? So, I mean, how often do I use that? Like, oh, uh, twice of never, no. <laughs> I use it every once in a while, it's fun to do that. It's definitely not a selling point for me, but um, it is It is nice. I, I don't like the automatic tension that they have on a lot of these computerized sewing machines. I wanna have manual control of my tension. So uh, this one's stuck in automatic, which is really annoying. Um, so, and a forever machine is gonna have this little puppy here. It's called a knee lift lever. And it is so handy um, when you're like sewing and you need to lift the presser foot, but you don't wanna take your hands off of whatever you're gonna be pivoting or readjusting or whatever. You just hit this with your knee and it lifts the presser foot up. See, like, ooh, see that? And then you can keep on sewing. That thing is addicting. So my forever machine will have all of those components on it. And like I said, uh, they go up to about 700. Now I'm gonna say it's really hard to find one under a thousand dollars with the knee lift lever. I've been looking around, I found two machines that have that. It's the Juki and then this Eversone Sparrow, which I've never worked on an Eversone model, but um, definitely super cool um, things to have on a sewing machine. 
Now you can get up into sewing machines that will be like multiple thousands of dollars and honestly I've never sewn on one of those and I don't really care because um, I think the reason why they get so expensive is that they have like these deeper beds, they have bigger tables, they have you know like 10,000 stitches instead of like a hundred. They have ports on the side where you can hook them up to your computer and download things that make them so fancy fancies. And um, uh, let's see what else might they have. I don't know, I've seen a few of them that, uh, just things I don't use. I mean, I'm a, I'm a good old fashioned um, single needle tailoring kind of girl. So this one's a little bit too much for me most of the time. Uh, so those are my parameters for a good sewing machine. So like I said, a low price or a, a, um, an entry level price is probably going to be around $200. If you're paying if you're paying less than two hundred dollars, you're probably not going to get all the functions, the basic function functions like that, infinite stitch length, infinite stitch width, um, and the feed dog drops. Uh, a mid range is probably going to be like three hundred to seven hundred, and then those ones that um, do all those other things, I don't know what they do, <laughs> not going to be above that. Uh, probably around a thousand and up, and. Uh, they probably also um, come with uh, classes built in with them and lifetime warranties and all sorts, sorts of great things. I'm not going to say don't get one, but um, I think FAFs even just start around a thousand. So if you're after a FAF, just have the couch ready. So if you have any questions about what kind of sewing machine you should buy, think about your budget. Oh, one more thing, used sewing machines. I buy a ton of used sewing machines and I would say about 50% of them I end up happy with and I'm a really good sewing machine mechanic. Used sewing machines, you want to be really careful about buying those that you know like, what do you call it, the provenance? Like who used them and how long and if it has like no wear marks on the top and it comes with all of the tools that came with it in a, you know, a container and it has the instruction manual and the dust cover, you know somebody took really good care of it, get it. But if it looks like it's got like a few parts missing here or there, it's got a lot of wear, walk on by. You don't need to struggle unless you're a mechanic and then have fun. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or call or text or whatever and happy sewing machine shopping.